This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Okay, finally, we need a quick look at this alternative situation. Page 137. The alternative presentation. The direct method. It's most unlikely, most unlikely, I really, really extremely unlikely, remote, I would say. And if it were remote, if it were remote obligation, how would you deal with it? And if it were remote asset, how would you deal with it? But if it were a possible asset, you would ignore it. Whereas a probable liability, you would recognize... A probable asset you would disclose. A possible liability you would disclose. A virtually certain liability you would... I recognize you. Recognize. And a virtually certain asset... Recognize. The only time you wouldn't recognize a virtually certain or probable liability would be when? The only time you wouldn't recognize a virtual certain or probable liability would be would be it can't measure it. There's no reliable measurements. In that case, what would you do? Disclose it instead and explain why you cannot reliably measure. Okay, remember the symmetry? Which way am I going? That way I'm at. Alright, the symmetry of the table. It's a beautiful table. Okay, 137, alternative methods. What we've done is we've looked at the indirect method. You will not. I'm, I'm almost prepared to, to guarantee that you will not be asked to do the direct method. You may be asked to say what it is and why it's different. The difference is in arriving at net cash flows from operating activities. It's just a different way. It's a different approach. Apparently some people do prefer it because it shows how much money did you actually receive from your customers. How much money did you actually pay to your suppliers for goods and expenses. It also shows separately how much you actually paid to your employees. Sales, therefore, the top line revenue is calculated as being opening receivables Plus revenue. That's closing receivables. That's actually not strictly complete. If we look at your fitter on the next page. You look at your fitter. We've got opening receivables of 625. And we made sales of 2933. So we're expecting to receive 3558. Actually, they still owe us these receivables. They still owe us 491, and so we didn't receive that. We look like we've received 3067. But even that's wrong. Because in note 1, it tells us that there's a bad debt been written off. One of these people up here, opening receivables, one of these people has not paid us 17. We have to write him off as a bad debt. So we need to take another 17 off there. 
3050 is the cash we've actually received in the year. Where in a set of financial statements will you find the detail of bad debts written off? Where will you find the detail of bad debts written off? The answer is you won't. Unless it's exceptional. This is a really huge one, exceptional, materially exceptional. But otherwise you won't find anywhere within the financial statements the fact that we've written off 17,000 bad debt. The banks at the moment, banks and building societies, are having to, they're having to disclose it because they are writing off exceptional debts. Hundreds and hundreds of millions. Getting rid of just write them off. But it's exceptional. Okay, can you do the same exercise for um, the amounts you've paid to your suppliers? Just your trade suppliers, not the uh, not the expense suppliers. Mm. No, not those. I don't think the answer is one eight two zero. I think 1820 is wrong. You see, cost of sales does not equal purchases. Cost of sales is not the same as purchases. Cost of sales is 1748, but that has to be adjusted for inventory. And purchases are therefore 1877. And now you can put 1877 into your opening and closing current liabilities, accounts payable. And that gives us a, a cash payment for trade supplies of 1949. That would come, well, it should come, it doesn't actually, but that should come as a second nature thing to UK students, where cost of sales is opening inventory plus purchases less closing inventory. Okay. And we need to look at the expenses, because we've also paid some of them as well. 
Well, I can do with this pretty quickly, I'm hoping. 755 is the combined expenses, admin and distribution. So it looks like we've actually paid 755, but we've not. We've not actually paid that money out because 84 of that is depreciation. So now we're down to 671. And employment costs, I'm going to show those separately. So that brings me down to 548. Bad debts, I didn't pay those either. So that gets me down to 531. Oh, but paragraph 2 there. We made a profit on disposal of 15. And this has been used to reduce the admin expense charge. So I need to add 15 to get to the true admin payment of 546. That's how much I've actually paid. So I had sales, receipts from customers, I had 3050. Payments to suppliers was 1949. Cash paid for expenses was 546, which gets me to 555. And employee costs was 123. So my net cash flow from operating activities was 432 in. Now, if you will, this evening, if you will do part A of this question, do the cash flow using the indirect method, you should find it comes to 432. Net cash flow from operating activities should come to 432. BBT, 4.30. Profit on disposal, 15. Depreciation, 84. Bad debts I wouldn't know about. I wouldn't know about the bad debt write-off. Change in inventory. It's gone up by 129. Cash out. Change in receivables have gone down by 134. That's cash in. Change in payables that's gone down by 72. Cash out. Just a quick addition, just to see. That's. Um, Five one four four nine nine three seventy four five hundred and four five hundred and two four hundred and thirty two. Just a different way of getting to the same figure.